Hey there everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Josepha and today I'm going to be presenting you with the top 10 backups of 2017 for Final Fantasy Trading Card Game. So yesterday we covered the forwards of 2017 and I wanted to kind of cover forward summoned and backups so today we'll be doing the backups. So if you guys want to stick around and see what my opinions are for the top 10 backups of 2017 which is completely opinion based although I have been kind of colluding with a lot of the other players that are pretty reputable within the community so hopefully you guys can agree with some of the, my choices here but if you want to see what picks I've made here then stick around and stay tuned. Now my number 10 pick here is Archer, which is an Opus 1 card, and many of the cards actually in this list are all from Opus 1 rather than anything later, which is very interesting considering that the forwards, usually the later ones are the stronger ones, so yeah, it's something worth noting. But Archer is a card that I definitely want to put on this list because it's very, very, very strong in most matchups where a backup is a problem for you, and in Wind you often find that you'll be using at least one of these. But over time, it seems that backup destruction has become a lot less relevant and a lot less prominent within the meta. But that being said, this card is definitely not one that you can ever write off, similar to Hecaton Kaya when it comes to the summons, because backup destruction might not be a great thing right this second, but it's definitely something worth bearing in mind in the future because a really strong backup could come out at any time that it becomes meta-defining and you're gonna wanna way around it. So Archer is definitely something you wanna keep in mind. Now my number 9 pick here is Selfie from Opus 2. Now Selfie is just a very very strong character in general because being able to give an attacking forward 2k until end of turn is much stronger than it sounds. Especially on a 2 CP fire backup because there aren't actually that many great fire backups in the game at all. So Selfie definitely stands out. And being able to attack with something that's 2k weaker than your opponent's strongest guy and then still not want to block you for fear of losing their biggest guy is definitely a threat worth taking. But, or being able to just go over something that they, they can match you is just very, very strong. There's not an awful lot to be said about Selfie, to be quite honest. It's just one of those things where boosting power just on a whim is very, very powerful. So it's definitely worthwhile being on this list as far as I'm concerned. My number eight pick on this list is Maria. Now, Maria is probably something that everyone kind of goes, really? Only number eight? But of late, it seems like power in units is becoming less relevant to the way that the game is played. Which sounds really stupid because obviously the only way to deal damage is with forwards and therefore their power is really, really important. And it is. But Maria in particular works very, very well in any other colour but Wind, ironically, because you have access to other power boosters in, in every other colour, which means you can play Maria and their own power booster. And because Wind's power booster is Maria, you don't really have that option. That being said, Maria does go in a heck of a lot of decks that Wind is involved in, particularly dual coloured decks. And I did want to give a special mention to every other power booster as well, so like Enercrow, Lebro, that kind of thing. Because if you're running a mono coloured deck, you're going to be running three of that card. It's just almost a staple, but there are, or you need a very, very good reason not to run three of those kinds of cards. So I definitely wanted to put power boosters at least somewhere on this list. My number seven pick here is Yuna, and Back when Opus 1 was a thing, I was a huge fan of the 5 CP Yuna that used to have the EX Buster bounce a guy to its owner's hand. Nowadays, this Yuna far surpasses her. Although the other Yuna does still see play, this one is a 2 CP Yuna that has a magnificent effect because water has some of the strongest summons in the game and reducing their cost by one is almost always going to be useful. But she also is an enabler for the YRP combo, which is one of the strongest combos in the game in terms of value. Water Wind is a very, very prevalent deck type purely on the back of those three cards. So Yuna have, being a combo piece and a relevant, just good card in water in general, definitely wanted to be at least somewhere on this list. Seventh place, I think, was the best place to put her, and you'll see why when we get to the sort of the higher end ones when we get to them. In sixth place, I have Monk. Now, Monk is an extraordinary forward because, like Selfie, he or she boosts power very, very, very well at any time, and it can, and as opposed to Selfie, it doesn't have to just be when they're attacking. It can be at any time, so when they're blocking, when they're attacking, and giving them Brave is useful. It's probably not the reason you're going to use Monk, but it is an additional option if you need it. But one of the things that's really interesting with this game in particular is that Backups that break themselves in order to give a positive effect is actually more beneficial sometimes than ones that don't destroy themselves because it means that you can make room for other backups that will have a more relevant effect when they come into play or something like that. So Monk um, can absolutely push the game forward for you in a way, in multiple ways at once and therefore Monk is like pretty much guaranteed to be in most earth decks that you're going to see. Number five on this list is Red Mage. Now, Red Mage has an extraordinary ability. Making it so that your opponent, one of your opponent's forwards can't block 
is an extremely powerful ability. It gets you around things like Renawa, it gets you around anything that gets bigger when it blocks like Prish, if people still run Prish, that kind of thing. And just being able to force damage through is a very, very powerful thing. The only reason it's not higher on this list is because fire isn't doing particularly well in tournaments as of late. You see the odd fire list on in, you know, top cuts around the world now and again, and it's sort of, now Opus 4 has come out, it started rising again, but over Opus 3, it didn't really perform all that well. So the only reason that Red Mage isn't higher is because of the colour it has. But the ability itself is actually phenomenal, so definitely a, an amazing backup and definitely worth being in the top five on this list. It, to be honest, the top five, as with the forwards, it gets so tight that it's very, very difficult to kind of order any of these. If you disagree with anything that I'm saying and you are more than welcome to do so, then say something in the comments below because I, you know, this is all just my opinion kind of combined with a few other people's. So definitely bear that in mind as you're watching this list. Now, number four here is a card that everybody loves to hate, and that's Minwu. Myself included. Like, Minwu is a card that I run very, very frequently, uh, but it bounces up and down in the meta like a yo-yo. Sometimes it's in every deck, sometimes it's in none, and now it's getting more popular again, and it counters some of the more popular combos in the game, things like Al Cid. It, it, but it being a 3 CP passive effect backup, it's a very defensive card. It's not something that's going to push the game forward for you. It doesn't thrust momentum in your favour, but it certainly sticks a spanner in your opponent's works, that's for sure. And Minwoo is a card that will always be, you know, the reason that I put it so high on this list is because it's a card that you will always have to bear in mind if you're building a deck that's based around damage. If you, like, go into a deck that's like fire or lightning and you forget about Minwoo, it will kick you up the arse eventually. So it's definitely worth being high on this list purely for that reason. If, even if your opponent's not running it, the threat of its existence is enough to make people's decks change slightly. It's a good card. Number three on this list is another Red Mage, but it's the Lightning Red Mage in this case. And again, it's from Opus 1. Now, haste in this game is extraordinary. It's absolutely exceptional in this game. So being able to give it to anything is a huge deal. You know, having things like Genesis running around, like coming in, dulling and freezing a guy, then attacking and then hitting them, and then dropping the card out of their hand at the same time. That's so much of a, that's such a drastic momentum swing in your favor that Light, Lightning Red Mage just does so well. And it goes in pretty much every Lightning deck. It's the first backup I go to when I build a Lightning deck. It's the first that a lot of people do. And it featured prominently in Worlds, it featured prominently in Euros, it featured prominently in US Nationals, it's everywhere. So to kind of write this guy off despite his meek appearance, or her meek appearance actually, I'm just looking at the card now, and I'm pretty sure that's Refia. <laughs> You know, it's like, you can't write this guy off. It's She's just so good. Number two on this list is actually like my favorite backup, but I understand that there is one or like a, a, at least one backup that's better than her, is Shantotto. And I adore Shantotto. I like the bitch laugh. I like the way she is. She's even doing the bitch laugh on the card, but that's irrelevant. It's the fact that she's a board wipe and she's the only effective board wipe in the game right now. Apart, I mean, you have things like Ultima, and X Death, but they're very they're a lot lot harder to pull off effectively. Whereas Shantotto, if you're on a back foot, she will pull you back into the game instantly. And she, like, I just think that a card like that, it's similar to how I talked about Minwu. If you're looking at an Earth deck, if your opponent is playing an Earth deck, you know you cannot overextend. Because if you do, this cow's gonna come down and she's gonna wipe your board and she's gonna laugh at you while she's doing it, and that's not good for you. So to, ig to ignore her existence is to your peril, basically. So I, I will always run at least two copies of Shantato in any Earth deck that I run, and I run a lot of Earth decks. I actually really like Earth. So like, I'm always gonna run this card. So, I mean, if you guys disagree with me on Shantato and you think that she should be lower on this list or even number one, then again, sound off in the comments and let me know. Now, something I wanted to give an honorable mention to, and it isn't number one, purely because of the wide range of them, like you can't really narrow it down to one card, is searches. You have to run at least one searcher in every deck you play, honestly. Consistency is some of the most important things in the entire game, in any card game. Consistency matters. So I wanted to give special mention to kind of 3CP EX burst searchers like the new Zack and Queen Bran. They're both very, very good examples. And the wider the search scope, the better. So the ones that, had, that search for anything from their particular game, like Gastalian Empire, Sid, or Jesse, they also get a special mention here. But there are so many different searchers that I couldn't narrow it down to one card. Otherwise, it would be number one because I think it's that damn important. But there's so many of them, 
just bear them in mind, you have to run at least one of them, if for no other reason than being able to shuffle your deck after a bad mulligan. But consistency is key in these kind of games, and this one is absolutely no different. Now my number one pick for backup of the year would be an ice backup that's been around since the dawn of the game's existence, and it's Devout. Devout, to me, is probably the strongest for, like, backup in the game, if not the strongest card in the game, purely because it has so much utility. If you see any ice deck in a top cut of any tournament around the world ever, 99% chance that there's going to be three copies of this card in that deck. And it's just an extremely good card all around, it just works, it does its thing, there's so many combos you can do with it, but the fact that it's only playable during your turn doesn't mean that it isn't at instant speed. So you can be attacking, then block, and then you bring in a Gipple from your from your um, break zone, which is why a lot of Ice Earth decks run Gipple. Or you can bring in Genesis, you can bring in Amon, you can bring in this. So the, the combination of things you can do with Devout is endless. It's the only If you have one of these in your opening hand, you're never going to mulligan that hand because you just want it down that quickly. And it's the only example I can think of of a 4 CP backup that you would play turn one without fail. It's just that damn good. So again, if you disagree with me, if you think that any of the cards that I put on lower down on the list should be a number one or even a card I haven't mentioned, then say so in the comments below because I'm really interested the reason I wanted to make videos like this, as well as the fact that it's a really nice way to close out the year of 2017 for FFTCG, is because I really want to know what you guys think. Because my opinion is not mandatory, it's not something that everybody has to take into account, but I really wanted to show what my opinion was so that you guys could do the same back to me, because I love discussing these things and it's great. But yeah, to me, number one in the backup slot when it comes to this game, Devout. And that's it for my top 10 backups, so if you wanted to check out my top 10 forwards of 2017, then I'll leave a link to that video in the description box below. And then next up you'll have a summon video to look forward to, and summons is really tight. Because the summons in the guest game that are good are really good, and there's a lot of duff ones, but there's ones that really stick out and there's a lot of them. So that's going to be a really difficult list to make. But thank you very much for watching, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and share all these videos out, because if you want to help get people into this game, then I'd like to think that I can try and help people to do that. So if you want to share this, this video or any of my other videos out to people who are trying to get into the FFTCG, then please do so. So thanks again for watching, and I'll speak to you guys soon. Bye.